Okay, let's go. Do you guys like the conference? Yes? No? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I assumed so because I figured none of you actually really use the Wi-Fi. <laughs> I think we had like a total of a couple of gigabytes of traffic. That was yesterday. It was <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for focusing on the content. We appreciate that. Uh, we also realized that one of our event guys uh, has the most active client, so I figured uh, we didn't have any technical differences, uh, difficulties downstairs. So that's cool. Um, if you uh, made any pictures during those two days, uh, we would really appreciate if you could send those. those. Uh, we won't publish them uh, without consent, especially when they're people recognizable. We'll obviously respect that. It's just very useful for us to have some impressions of the event itself. So if you took pictures, especially if they're good, <laughs> give yeah, us a And not drop. compromising, then please uh, send them to us. Yeah. yeah. Drop us a line. That would be really cool of you. Let's start with the batch, shall we? All right. So I see some of them are still blinking, which is nice. That means uh, either you got some new batteries or you actually switched them off uh, beforehand. And none of them seem to have been exploding, so um, that's good for me. So. We obviously did a few things with the batch, and I did a small lightning talk kind of explaining um, how we did it, uh, the whole design. Some of the questions that came up is, what's the freaky uh, binary number on the side? Well, it is a binary number, um, so just type it in. It's actually 2016, if you ignore all the spaces between. So not too difficult to figure out um, in the end. For um, the batch, I was very pleased that a lot of the people actually tried and dumped the firmware of it. We didn't do any shenanigans by encrypting it or XORing it. There's a few funny uh, strings in there for, for those who dumped it. And we've seen a few people um, definitely manage to get it off the batch and then getting the password for the batch only Wi-Fi. Um, shouts out there to the B-Sides uh, Lisboa team uh, who did very well on that one. Because, of course, they also found the backend server, the Hardex server, which we used to kind of see how many batches were locked in and sending you new messages, new blinking uh, stuff. We didn't put any authentication on it um, because we wanted to share the fun. And they actually did uh, behave. So only sending the, the blue uh, and the red uh, triggers for the, the batches. We tried to override them again with the pink ones. So a little battle there. And we'll go into a few of the stats on the next slide. So on the left side, you see that we had yesterday roughly 220 batches active um, at one or the other time. There were more batches given out, but of course, um, some of them just ripped off the battery uh, instantaneously because, well, we'll probably go into the details why afterwards on the next slide. Today, we started with a little bit less, um, so roughly 140 active batches, kind of slowly degrading, uh, probably because the batteries started to run off and some people started to run off as well. Uh, but we're pretty pleased with that. On the right side, you see the voting. So blue is the people who haven't pushed any of the buttons. Uh, the orangey one is the left button, and green one is on the right. Uh, we're still having the, the question there. What's the question? The button one. So if you hold it in front of you on the lower left side, yes, BTN one. Um, it's, it's labeled, yeah. Exactly. Because of that, um, yes, we probably should explain it better next time. We're still analyzing, also getting a few of the uh, outliners there because we saw a few people trying to get the Easter egg codes and probably voting the whole time, uh, which might screw off a few of the, the votings. But we still hope you have fun. And with that, going on to the Easter egg codes, so there's 10 Easter egg codes which are in there. And no, we didn't publish them on GitHub, uh, but thanks for trying. Um, 
they're pretty basic uh, because they're all mirrored. So for the people who can't really distinguish between left and right, any of them should work. No offense there, sorry. And well, you started with the all right or all left. Um, we had some people coming in and said, man, that was a really, really difficult one. 32 characters and kind of really mixed up. That's probably because the interrupts are sometimes a bit messy. Um, but seems to have worked in the end, so um, probably a win-win situation. And we published them on the Area41-Batch website with some more information there as well. So just go and visit that one after the conference. And then, yes, the question was, why would people remove the battery? Um, especially interesting, I thought, was the idea of removing it before going to the toilet and then actually put it back in afterwards. Um, I didn't even think about that. That's uh, a whole new level. So, yes, I mean, some people said, well, microphone, because there is a coil on it. Well, I use it for the, um, well, the obvious part, which is the level up of the power, because we need 3.3 volt. Um, of course, on the right side, yes, you can remove the shield there and see that there is actually an um, ESP below there and the RAM, at least for those who, who recognize those. Um, question would be, why would I want to listen in you on the toilet? Uh, probably not so interesting. Um, Wi-Fi would probably make more sense, right? Because it is a Wi-Fi chip, and you probably carry it home, so that's a nice war driving or war walking, and probably gives me time to crack your Wi-Fi at home, VPA2, right? Uh, probably get a few initialization vectors and maybe get the spike on the bandwidth in the morning for all the people uploading it again. Could be, right? Or as we said, well, we could have done something where if you remove the battery, there is still a little power in the coil, which actually would be good to do some stuff and actually trigger the moment that you remove the battery. So. If you do that, maybe you should wait five minutes and then do whatever you want to do, um, just as a reminder. Last but not least, of course, location tracking. Uh, Wi-Fi is very good for that. Um, could also scan for, let's say, any other device in the um, venue close by. Maybe do some IoT vulnerability scanning with it or just check if uh, you have a phone enabled or something like this. So a lot of this. Uh, spiked our interest, and maybe we come back with a few ideas. But, of course, um, yes, we didn't have time to. it. No, uh, we didn't do it uh, because it would be unethical. And, well, you should enjoy <laughs> it without the fear. So, no, we didn't do any of the tracking or any of the other spying that we could have. But thanks for the ideas. Um, well, let's see. So, Apart from the batches who generated um, some traffic, um, as we said, we had some traffic on the other networks as well. And here's from uh, Fortinet, the, they did the scanning and monitoring if anyone's downloading malware or uploading uh, in that sense. But as Stefan already said, not too much actually happened. Uh, we saw a third of it is uh, just browsing web clients. Uh, streaming, uh, so 12, 13% streaming. That started this afternoon to pick up a little bit. Yeah, that was around 3 o'clock. Yeah, I think might have been 3 o'clock. Um, so that might be uh, an explanation. So after all, most of the people behaved. Not sure if it's because no one played offense because there weren't too many people that could be targeted uh, because no one really dared uh, to use it. Well, we'd never know. But on the next slide, we have a few um, of the things that uh, they saw in the network. So basically just a few DNS messages, which might be just corrupted, um, and a few TCP uh, mismatches there. So not too much, uh, frankly. A few very, very old uh, buffer overflows for JPEG, um, which of course you all have patched. Um, so yeah, nothing to worry about. But still, if anything happens, well, you probably should just, uh, yeah patch it beforehand and maybe reinstall the system, right? But we didn't do anything either. I wonder if our, our light guy is panicking right now. Because he asked me uh, backstage if he should maybe set up his laptop and like reinstall everything. Maybe, man. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you okay. think it was him? Hmm. Okay. Let's get to our favorite part, giving free stuff away. Um, 
We'll start with Fortinet. Uh, is Marco here? Marco, Sen, please come on stage. So for all of those who um, scanned the QR code and figured another binary number um, to, well, solve it, um, we're now going to have the raffle for the nice prizes. So do you have the names of the winners? The ones that we sent you earlier? Oh, you already sent them. Okay, so third place is Severine Miller. Severine, are you in the room? Severine Miller? Oh, looks like someone doesn't want to collect his prize. Well, they will send it to him. I think they got the address, right? All right, so um, thanks at least for playing. Second place is uh, Carl Rose. Oh, the winner! Room, please come. Please come on up. You get a nice uh, bottle come up in a wooden case. Although Marcus holding both, I think you only get one, so sorry for that. Oh, you, oh, it's the second one, so he gets two. I thought you're giving away the one from Severin. Congratulations. Congratulations. And last but not least, the drone. So hopefully uh, you're close by or have a nice large uh, hand luggage if you're traveling. First place goes to Christoph Roesch. Over there. Please come on up. Congratulations. Thanks to Fortinet for sponsoring the um, prizes and um, doing the draw. And thanks for you for playing. Thank you, Marco. OK, let's go on and go with Project, Project 7. Yeah. Another Marco. Marco, please yeah. come on stage. Cool. So there were a few um, different, let's say, coding examples with some vulnerabilities that you should find. And apparently, you all tried, but there was only one person who actually managed to get all of the seven, right? So hmm, maybe you didn't try enough, hard enough, um, or maybe you found some that they didn't and didn't tell them. I don't know. Um, but nevertheless, we got a few entries in here, and I think Third prize, so a biometric USB key for the third prize without your fingerprint on it. So third prize goes to Tiago Sintra. Okay, so second prize. A Pebble smartwatch. Second prize goes to Konstantin Zanke. Tankel. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> so first prize is from his pocket, not because he's cheating, but because that's the only one with all the correct answers. And first prize goes to Martin um, Hammerle. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Congratulations. Very local here. So he gets an iPad, freshly new, not jailbroken, I guess. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Cool. Congratulations. Cool. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Protect7, for the raffle. Awesome stuff. Harry, can we get Harry Deppler on here? No? Maybe? 
Coming, Coming up. up. Wonderful. Okay. So perfect. For the next, that was with the Subaru. Um, there was a barcode under it if you actually removed it and saw it. And there's a website behind it. And who's the winner? The winner is Vincenzo Di Somma. Vincenzo, Vincenzo, yeah, Vincenzo Di Somma. And he gets a Nexus. Brand new. Congratulations, thanks for playing. <laughs> Thank you, Google, and I hope you enjoy the Zugros as well. Fix whatever you need to fix with them. Yeah. Thank you very much for all the sponsors that actually put up a giveaway. Makes our life a little bit easier because we can give out free stuff and people enjoy it. That's cool. So um, what do we have as prizes, actually? I don't know <laughs> you organize. <laughs> well, we have two prizes. First prize is a 50 euro, 5 zero Amazon voucher, so you can buy whatever you want to break afterwards. And the second prize is one of the customized DEF CON lockpicking Swiss Army knife. So it's a lockpicking which kind of looks like an army knife and you can fold it in your pocket. It should be safe for travel. <laughs> so let's start with the second prize, the lockpicking set. Ah, I see. Edwin did a good job there of uh, making it hard, so let's get my knife out. <laughs> That's how accidents happen. We got insurance for this, it's fine. <laughs> there was probably some easier way to open it, I guess, but. <laughs> Sorry, Adrian. All right, so I'll pick second, you pick first prize. Well, you did all the work, you picked the winners. <laughs> yeah. Not so going to do the glory part now. So, second prize. Oh, Martin Harmele again. <laughs> At least now he knows where to get up to the stage, right? So. And thanks for providing feedback. Really appreciate it. And the voucher, 50 euro, goes to? <laughs> now I'm just looking at you. It goes to uh, Richard Salin. <laughs> Congratulations. And for all the rest, thanks for putting in the feedback. Um, we definitely take it uh, serious, and we will analyze it and try to improve for next time. Thank you. OK, so much for giveaways. Let's get a little bit more serious. No. Oh, right, yeah. So as this conference comes to an end, inevitably, want you to save a date, but it's not for Area 41. <laughs> you have to wait a little bit until we get some rest and can actually... Yeah, let's have a weekend of look sleep. At the, yeah. We are not in a position to make plans right now. But you should save the date for B-Side Zurich, which happens in September uh, here in Zurich. Um, we at DEFCON Switzerland, a couple of our board members, are involved with the organization of B-Sides. They have an amazing team together, doing a great job with an interesting format. So if you're in or around Zurich in September, please like, give them a shout out, 
Buy, can you buy tickets already, Pasquale? Buy tickets at some point when they're available. Or even better, uh, submit something as a talk. Or submit some, something. The cover paper is still open. So yeah, please support, check it out and submit something. Support B-sides, that would be fantastic. Now, we have to thank some people. We want to thank some people because we had such an amazing team this year. It was, we, I don't think we had that smooth of an operation ever at an Area 41 or a Hash Days or any other event we have thrown so far. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much to all the volunteers that worked behind the scenes. Thank you to everybody who was um, doing catering, doing cleanup, doing the lights, doing the sound, all the things that you need to do to make something like that run that smoothly. We are truly grateful for everybody that helped. And I think all of these people deserve an applause from you guys. It is truly rare to see people so dedicated, so committed. It's hard work, yeah. Completely <laughs> focused on the job at all times. <laughs> you guys were great. Thanks so much. Thanks. Also, again, thank you to all of our sponsors, all of the platinum sponsors, all of our gold sponsors, all of our silver sponsors, all supporting orgs, everybody that contributed, small, large, everything counts in the end to make something like that happen. And we really do appreciate it. As this helps us to provide you with hot food, free beer, free water, and all the things that you hopefully enjoyed. So thanks again for everything, for the support. So it's going to get a little bit more crowded up here because I would like you to introduce you, like to introduce you to our core team. Um, as I said before, there are so many people contributing. We're just sort of the face of this thing, but I would still like you to meet some people. Uh, Candid is already on stage here. He is not only the master of the batch, he has so many areas that he contributes uh, his work into. So. Thank you very much for your work, Candid. Fantastic as always. Thanks. And obviously to your right, Stefan Friedli, uh, harassing all the speakers to be here on time, to actually submit something in the first time and make sure that they know where we are, why it's important to come, and obviously, well, to deliver a nice talk. So thanks, Stefan. Cool. Next up, we have Adrian Leuenberger, which you never see on stage usually because he's always behind the scenes. <laughs> he's running the video equipment. He's, again, doing so much cool shit. He deserves to be on stage right now, and he deserves zero applause. Thank you very much, Adrian. And and he's probably the one who has to fix the box that I just broke there with the knife, so sorry again. Yeah, <laughs> he's the one who would have opened it like elegantly, but it's fine. And last but not we have second Adrian uh, supporting us for years actually behind the scenes, but more actively this year. Uh, he wrote the large chunk of the software that is running on the batch. He was coordinating all the volunteers on site, made sure we could focus on the things that really needed our attention, made sure operations went smoothly. Please give a huge round of applause for Adrian Wiesmann. I feel like it's worth pointing out that a lot of people who attend Area 41 don't know a lot about DEF CON Switzerland as a DEF CON chapter. Some people come in to do recommendations, some people come because they see the event on Eventbrite and just figured it would be cool to go to a security conference, and that's fine. Uh, the one problem this whole thing has that a lot of people don't know that this entire thing is and will always be a non-profit event. 
We keep ticket prices as low as we can. None of us here on stage, none of the people helping to organize this make any money from this. Believe me, we really don't. And it's a great pleasure to do so, but if you're here in Switzerland, if you want to contribute to the community, we would really appreciate it. If you would join us, if you would become a member, membership is 20 bucks a year. You get to attend other cool events. We do beer on Tuesday in three different cities by now. Four? Three? Four, Four different actually. cities by now, um, including the French part of Switzerland, which, you know, exists. <laughs> and we, what did we do? We did the... Uh, we did a softer defined radio workshop. Uh, we do lock picking uh, workshops. So there's tons of things that you should actually check out. Yeah, membership is unrestricted. Even if you're not living in Switzerland and you just want to contribute, become a member, like a remote member, we will make that happen, no problem. Just like send us an email, we'll add you. We will be happy to have you guys. And maybe to explain why there is 41, 30, 31 in the uh, DC chapter, well, that's how the DEF CON chapters are built. So that's the telephone area code for Switzerland, 41 and 31 for the capital, which is Bern. So not too much of a mystery, right? Yeah. And with that, we have reached the end of Area 41. Thanks to all of you guys for coming, for contributing, for sharing. Please come back next time. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. And for those who want to know why they didn't make all the seven challenges from uh, Protect7, Marco will explain over there what you missed. Thanks, have a safe trip home.